All right, guys. Hey, it's Ryan Bridge Bugman, and we are at the headquarters. And by we, I am here with Martin Mikulas. Um, If you're not sure what's going on there, Martin is our Texas representative. Uh, and I'm going to let him explain all about himself in a minute to give you an idea, bring you up to speed. Um, look, today we're doing something a whole lot different. Martin's here for the holidays. He and I hardly ever get to see each other in person anymore. We're bringing him into the studio and he and I are going to try and relay some highlights, possibly some uh, interesting things that have happened, reasons why he's with the LLC and, and just some of the cooler things that happen around and behind the scenes uh, that most people don't ever, that's you guys, don't ever get to see and don't even probably know about. Uh, we're going to delve into some pretty deep conversation. We're going to probably get a little personal at times, but I can assure you uh, we are not going political here. So if, if you're expecting that, give it up because that's not what I do. So we're going to talk about all the fun, cool stuff that's been going on past, present, future, both between he and I and the bug man. Because Martin and I have a relationship that goes way back. He's known me pretty much not his whole life, but almost. It's gone on 20 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much a 20-year relationship here, which is awesome. And I've relied on Martin for a lot of cool stuff. We're going to delve into that. So stay with us, man. It's going to be a ton of cool Martin the Bugman fun. And, uh, and I hope everybody enjoys this video. <clears throat> all right, guys, let's get things started. First of all, Martin, I want to I wanna give you the opportunity to tell everybody <coughs> how you are connected. Um, in other words, before we, I don't want to go too deep with the past yet, but I do want to give you the opportunity to tell everybody who you are, where you live, what you do. Currently, I'm living in Laredo, Texas. If you're not familiar, it's deep, deep, deep South Texas, right on the Mexican border. I currently work for the U.S. Department of Agriculture as an entomologist down there, and I help clear shipments coming across the border. My history with Ryan goes back almost 20 years, like I said. <laughs> 4-H, and then through 4-H, I got kind of indoctrinated into Penn State, and then that's where I went to college. That's where I went for Ag Science and Entomology, got out of that, worked with the PA Department of Agriculture for a little bit as a lab technician, worked in private industry doing seed sales for a little bit, got into USDA in 2019, and then off and on in the middle of that, I worked Bugman gigs and kind of tried to help brainstorm the social media, YouTube, internet thing with him for the past couple of years. And <laughs> unfortunately, you know, like when I, when I moved to Texas, some of that kind of fell off my involvement with that. But, uh, you know, here I am. Yeah, Martin, you can, you can attest to the fact that I am not tech savvy. No. Uh, you can probably also attest to the fact that technology is not Ryan the Bugman savvy. That even the simplest of technological issues somehow blow up in my face and become impossible because you have tried to troubleshoot some of those things over the years and i'm going to tell you right now it's still happening so nothing's changed <laughs> um i still suck with technology i cannot grasp most of the modern really good stuff i still struggle with even though i have a whole other circle of people that help me with those things and literally a group of people that help me with those things now they're seeing all the same things that you got to see they're experiencing the same frustrations that you got to see uh -huh. um which all start with me and then i float and delegate it all to them so yeah. so you get that um i i don't i don't like the fact that i am terrible with technology should we have um, kept it the same types and phonographs or what? <laughs> you know the old telex which most people don't even know what that is i i don't i can only tell you that i that as technology is moving ahead i'm still kind of stuck in stuck in the mud but it's fortunate that because of you and we're going to keep this about you and i but um because of you i could not complete most of the technical tasks that i was able to whether it means deciphering what's going on with my phone or whether it is studio issues or whether it is the dslr camera um and, and bringing that into the fold and using that as a, a technical tool gimbals you know and i don't mean the store because I mean, that's my age that's a technical device that you hook onto a phone and or onto a onto a camera and you can run that around in the field with you who knew he knew that's all stuff that plays in because you were there to do that uh i would have gone in the last four and a half five years using cell phones and cell phones only 
Um, and we would have lacked in some areas, and it would have been a lot simpler in some others. But that's why it I been easier in hindsight. I, probably, but I would have. <coughs> I left that up to you. I may. I, I delegate those decisions to you because if you're gonna you're gonna take on the responsibility, I don't have to. And I love that aspect. Uh, not only about you, but also about everybody on my team. They all have their strong points. So yeah, let's let's move on though, because we're starting to. That's my fault. Let's let's move on. Do you remember? Do you remember when we met for the first time? Be honest. I was probably nine, maybe probably well before that, probably eight or nine years old. Nixon Park. Okay, I didn't know if you remembered it was Nixon. So I didn't know Park. if you remembered that day. It was. <laughs> I think it was the butterfly count. Nope. It wasn't a black light night. Nope. That came later. Nope. But you had a slideshow about one of your Africa trips. Probably, South America, South America. probably a little bit. It was probably just a just an intro program. Yeah. Because I wasn't doing, I was doing programs, but I wasn't doing specifically because the LLC hadn't formed. I was still yeah. still busting yeah, shoplifters and that stuff. So, um, you and I met at Nixon County Park, a local county park. Used to hire me. To do a, an insect weekend, and I would spend the entire weekend doing programs, and we would do collecting trips, and we would do cocoons, and we do all the stuff. And Martin's mom signed him up. I don't know how many other things you did for Nixon Park, but Martin's mom, uh, Diane's wonderful. Uh, kudos to her. Signed him up for that weekend, and that's where Martin and I met for the first time, dude. And uh, man. Who knew? <laughs> Some strange kid in the audience. Who, the well, you know, you were one of the more normal kids in the audience, but <laughs> but at the same time, who knew that that would that that would evolve from that weekend into the 4-H club, into the LLC, into yeah. and that's even you going to college, and I mean, who knew that that eight-year-old kid back then was intertwined in each other's lives. Well, yeah, 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 and it's amazing. And and you have literally seen the good, bad, and the ugly in my life in all in all lanes. Well, that goes both ways. Um, it, yep. And I didn't want to go there, but you, <laughs> you, you and I have seen the good, bad, and ugly uh, together. And and our families have met each other over the years, and our families have gotten to know each other over the years, and that's pretty awesome. But the one thing that I can say about you know you. And I could probably save this for the ending. But the one thing I can say about you is that you have always been important and on, on levels beyond most other people, beyond a lot of my uh, my good friends even. I mean, you're you're there, but because you're in so many, you're entwined. I like that. You're entwined into so many different aspects of my life, you know, personal, business, otherwise, that you're just a ton of fun to have around, even when you're not able to do much. Oh yeah, I mean, um, that, like that goes both ways. I don't want to cry, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, do no, that. no. We've been everything from friends to family to business partners to support groups and yeah, everything yeah. else in between. Yeah, you know? yeah. Good, bad, good, bad, and ugly. Um, it's it's good. If you don't have one of those folks, you need to find one of them because yeah. that's that's a big deal. Um, you, you know, I don't, I can't, I can't speak for what I did for you. I can just tell you that you have coasted me through a lot of really difficult times over the years. Um, and that's, you know, we're not going to go there yeah. because that's not important to the, to the cause <coughs> today, but regardless of it, it is still neat to think that over, even with all the friends I've had long, that have known me longer than you have even, there's still that cool connectivity that is so multifaceted between you and I, yeah. that you, when I call on you, you're there. Um, even if you can't directly help, you're usually indirectly there somewhere in the works. Yeah. And that's super, super cool to have somebody like that because I rely on people like you for those things. So so if there's any way to justify Martin's purpose for being here, purpose for being connected to me and the LLC, you're kind of plugging in. Uh, we're gonna go we're gonna go deeper on some things and I do want to move on because we can you know we can pedestal you all day long, but I want <laughs> I want everybody to hear all the other fun stuff going on. So currently, um, I want to go back and touch on something that you didn't really get into, and I want to touch on that. You are currently in Laredo, working USDA, working in, you know, border. What do you call that? What's the what's your job description? I mean, my job description is entomologist identifier. But well, I guess if we want to get a little deep on it, I work under AQI funds, which is Ag Quarantine and Inspection. So okay. I am involved with 
not really the the export process, but everything import. Okay. As far as agro ag products are concerned. So ag, including bugs and insects yes. that come through the border that get detected, found, <coughs> discovered, whatever. Martin gets to see those things, at least from the Laredo standpoint. There's ag, there's these same locations scattered all up and down the border? Or yeah, so pretty much anywhere that there's an international port, all up and down the, the west and east coast, all across the Mexican and Canadian border, and every international airport. So you have customs, and then you have USDA, my branch of USDA, PPQ involved with them. We have tight communication, but we are the, the first lines of defense for American agriculture. How cool is it to have somebody in the LLC circle that is not only a degreed entomologist, but is also somebody who is doing something that cool, um, that important? And most of us probably, myself included, most of us had no idea that that kind of stuff even goes on, let alone people do that. So super, super cool, man. That, that, that offers a whole different ideology and a whole different level of respect. I think to the LLC under that level where people realize that we have some very, very good, very qualified people. <clears throat> I'm lucky. I'm, I'm super, super blessed to have folks like Martin on there. Again, everybody on the team has their strengths, but Martin comes in with a lot of them. And some of those have been evolutionary and others have been just straight up intelligence because he's good that way. Um, so that's very cool. Um, so I'm proud, always, always proud to have you there, man. I've been proud to be part of that and proud to, uh, to watch you evolve from the eight-year-old kid to where you are now. And and one other thing, if if you're not going to watch this, if you would prefer to listen to this, I want to point out to everybody that this is a perfect video to just listen to if you want. If you don't want to look at our ugly faces and you just want to listen to something that might be entertaining for you, feel free to do that. Uh, I'm not expecting to uh, post a bunch of sub-videos and pretty pictures uh Things like that. Um, even if that does happen, you're not going to miss out on a, on a lot. Um, I wanted this to be sort of personal between Martin and I and to give everybody a little more insight into our personal relationship uh, around the bug man, around our, our history together, um, because there's a lot of fun, cool things that have happened. So it's good, something good to listen to. Okay, so I want to get back to where we're moving away from present, and I want to get back to our past. I want to delve in a little bit more to that. Everybody realizes we met back in the early days when you were like eight years old and I was 29 because I'm always 29. doesn't matter what you say. So either way, I've been 29 for almost, well, a, a while. That said, I want to go into after Nixon Park um, when your mom and we all met and then I realized that you were a little above and beyond the average kid who likes bugs. You reminded me a lot of myself because you were passionate. You were there. You were involved. And you were definitely enthusiastic on the day, as was your mom. I want to I want to delve into where do you remember things going from that point? What was the next step? I don't want to get too much into our history together, but I do want to delve into how how the connections were made that still evolve into what is today. Do you remember do you remember what the next step was after Nixon Park? That's kind of a no brainer. So the next well yeah, well the next step was coming back to Nixon Park and trying to track you down. But you know See I didn't know we, that we took some of the information from that, my mom. At the time, I was like, oh, let's go look for cocoons. I had no clue what the hell we were doing. Go look for bugs. I had no clue what the hell we were doing. Whatever. Sure. Um, but eventually, it's like, I think she asked Nixon Park, is there some kind of a program, whatever. And they were like, oh, yeah, Ryan has the York County 4-H Entomology Club. And then, I think that day, though, we, when we walked in, you happened to be in the office. Probably. To get information. I, I used to, there was a day I lived at Nixon Park. Yeah. So... I didn't have but, anything else but, going on, but, but I lived at Nixon yeah, Park. But that was really the, from what I remember, the next step. And that was 4-H. Yeah. Okay, so let's delve into, and I, and again, I don't want to spend the whole time plugging New York County 4-H etymology, although that is a major connection between Martin and I and a major amount of evolution with the two of us and, and how I eventually got to where I am, how... He and I got to where we are, and especially, I'm hoping, where you got to where you are on a personal level. Well, it's important, too, because, you know, a lot of people either do scouts. <clears throat> Some yep. people in rural communities do FFA. Yep. 
But 4-H is kind of like the, to me, it's the perfect middle ground of the two. You get all the programs, you get the entrepreneurial aspect, you get the networking aspect. You're working very tightly with the state's land-grant university. Ours is Penn State. Texas's is is uh, Texas A&M, for example. And, you know, for me, that created a lifelong... I still know people from when I was a kid. Sure. That, through Penn State, you know? Oh, that, you, that I met all the way back Not then. necessarily through 4-H entomology, well, no, but when through, I was in 4-H. Okay, yes, met through 4-H. That's what I was going to say. And, not necessarily through entomology, but you were also involved in other stuff besides just entomology. Yeah, shooting yeah, sports and things. See, but. M- most people aren't going to know that either, so I want to connect to that, that there was... I'm not going to plug it hard, because there's always time to do that, but um, and there will eventually be a video probably just about my connection to, to 4-H entomology, but 4-H is more than driving tractors and growing corn and raising cattle. It is about shooting sports and rocketry and entomology. and I think they do robots and, now. Yep, there's robotics. Just about any interest a kid can have, including driving tractors and growing corn and raising cattle. You can have those interests, and, and there's projects involved. And 4-H typically is going to delve the family aspect into that, whereas a lot of scouts are related to the individual, and now there's a competition level. 4-H is not competitive other than the, the, the kids are competing within the project. So you have a set amount of requirements, a set amount of standards, and if you hit those, you win the game. And everybody can be a winner, or some people will be bigger winners than other people. And that's important because that's life. And I think that's one of the things I've always liked about about 4-H. You can get your participation trophy. It's just going to be a different color depending on who participates yeah. harder and better. I think that's that's something I've always liked about 4-H, even if there's people that might tear it down for that, which I've never heard, but just in case. So let's get back to your the aspects of 4-H. And again, I don't want to focus hard on this for long. But it's a, I mean, it's so integral. It's, a, criti- it's a critical part of our history, and I, and I think it's important that people understand sticking to York County 4-H entomology, Mm because everybody's entomology clubs all over the country are different. So I don't want to compare ours too hard to everybody else. But sticking to York County, Pennsylvania entomology, what do you remember from your earliest days? What do you remember connecting to the best from your very early days in the the club? That that is relative maybe even to today, if if so. But I don't know. Maybe, Maybe just highlights. That is a really good question. I haven't probably ever thought of that, to be completely honest. Well, let's let's go let's go one step closer. Then let's say, what do you think is, and this is more generalized, but what do you think is more? What do you what do you think the entomology club did for you directly now? Not because there's indirectly a, a no. ton of things, but <clears throat> but on a direct level, what did what did York County 4-H? And I don't want to say me. I I want to make this about York County 4-H. Because it was never my club, it was never my, I I just did what I needed to do with the club to get the families what they needed to get from the project, from the hobby, um, in order mostly to keep people around. Well, I guess really it was, um, but what did, yeah, what did, what did the club do for you really that was just an outlet? Perfect. That's you know, kind of where I wanted you to go yeah, with Yeah, no, no, I mean, and this is something that we've talked about and something that you probably say a lot, but, you know, there's a point in a kid's life where they're into bugs and creepy crawlies or whatever, and it kind of depends upon the parent to steer how that's going to go. <laughs> My mom dropped me in, a, in an environment that allowed me to borderline obsess over, you know, bugs and whatever else I was into at the time. And luckily she did because it turned into a career. Look you at know. you now, buddy. Yeah. Look so, at you now. You know, yeah. some of it was the collecting aspect uh, some of it was the collection building aspect. Um, and, and you say a lot of that falls back on the outlet of it. Can knowing you, how to do it properly rather than just throwing stuff in a freezer and forgetting about it. Okay. You know? Can you talk a little bit more on a general aspect so that other people can relate to... Because I can do this, but I want you yeah. to do this for me to get to get your perspective. Can you relay more on the outlet from a kid who took the project, evolved through it, flourished all the way through, and is now, look at you now. But can you talk more about that outlet aspect um, outside of direct involvement in the club? Can you talk more about how the outlet aspect of it actually helped you? I think one of the worst things that a parent can do, or anybody can really do to anybody, 
is limit somebody's potential. Beautiful. I think, you know, one, one of the beautiful things about human beings is we have the free will that we have. We have the ability to think and think outside the box. And I see so many parents and educational programs that start to fit people into the box, especially at an early age. So that's what I mean by outlet. When you give, when you see a kid is into something and you find, you find the program or the situation that allows them to take that and run with it, that's truly what I mean. There, yeah. was, there was no upper limit. There was no, not even sky's the limit. There's no upper limit to this. Yeah. You know. And I want to delve one step further. I'm going to ask you this one too. This is going to be another, you know, this is going to be another one you're going to have to maybe struggle with until you, until you get this. How do you think the Entomology Club helped you in real life, not necessarily... And, I, and maybe I should say 4-H. Maybe I should say 4-H. <coughs> How do you? Because I don't want to take anything no, away no, from no. 4-H. How do you think 4-H and or the 4-H Entomology Club helped you in real life, throughout your life, um, that isn't necessarily bug and insect related? A uh, sense of responsibility, you know, or, or a sense of being part of something greater, uh, community, uh, interpersonal skills. Like what? Just being able to interact with people. Okay. You know, whether it's with other kids or with other... I mean, that's the other thing, and this might be more of a 4-H... Well, your version of the entomology club, but getting to the point where you are brushing shoulders with people in the Smithsonian and uh, people up at Penn State or wherever we were, you're dealing... As a, as a child, you are dealing more and more with adults. Yeah. In a professional setting. Yep. Or a semi-professional setting. That's cool. And I wasn't even thinking that route. So that's why I like to ask you those questions because I've been doing that my whole life. Yeah. So to hear somebody else bring that in is a whole other avenue that I'm so used to and I'm so connected to yeah. that I don't even think about that as being anything all that special. But I'm glad to see that that stands out as, as something that was, was you know purposeful and ended up being you know, helpful in that. What about, um, and you said, you said interaction with the public. That's a, that's a big deal because the, our club is very, under <coughs> normal circumstances, our club, and I can't speak for all of 4-H, I can tell you our club is very community connected yes. every chance we get, whether it's the great insect fair or whether it's a community event or the fair or the farm show, or we're always out there trying to connect. And I, and I'm, fortunate that I have wonderful families involved mm -hmm. and always kind of have that are that are eager to put their kids out there and pull their kids out of that comfort zone of being sitting at home in their little safe spot and all of a sudden they're standing at a table in front of a thousand well, people so <clears throat> and you know not to blow the lid on entomologists but most entomologists are a little weird no way get out of here no. uh, a, lot, a lot of them are not personable uh, they are my colleagues. They are my friends. I get it. I love you guys. But y'all are y'all are weird. You know? And I deal with you every day all across the nation. I think one of the things that 4-H has given me as a tool in my professional life is being able to communicate the information from the job or information about the agency to the public. I'm not just talking about, oh, this is moths and butterflies found around York County anymore. Yep. It eventually turned into the political savvy and being able to communicate with stakeholders and county level politicians in some cases about spotted lanternfly. And that eventually turned into being able to communicate with industry and customs and border protection about how to facilitate treatments. So in all ways, in various aspects, the, it, it built up that inner politician in me, the political savvy. Yeah basically creates a, almost like an inner maturity and an inner n lacking of fear of approaching people. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it's a or, politician or just yeah. some dude sitting across the table. Or even if you are like afraid of the situation, you just flip the switch because you've done it yep. a thousand times before. And yep. then not only that, but being able to relay the relevant information, the important information, and being able to understand and see your audience and looking at you entomologist you don't know how to do that you can identify a bug but you can't identify your audience yeah it gave me that as a tool as well and and that's cool to hear that because i'm constantly coaching uh like like a lot of people know owen my son 
you know, started hanging with me right around COVID, started really partaking in the programs. Even though he's not doing programs yet, he's still there. He's still working with the public. Um, I've watched him over the last couple of years come out of a shell, but I've had to coach him around that shell um, in order to get him to recognize exactly what you're talking about, where you've got to you've got to look across the table or you've got to look at the, the people in front of you and you got to recognize there are strengths and weaknesses in those audiences and in those people. And if you can't, if you can't break it down in that moment and connect with each of those different personalities, you're going to lose people in that mix. Yes. So that's awesome to hear somebody <clears throat> else say it and, and put it so, so cool like that. I, I like that. So it's nice to know that there's so many levels in your, in your life past and present that have, that have helped where 4-H entomology is connected. Okay, I want to, we can spend all month long talking about your county 4-H. You and I have a hard connection there that is important to us. So I want to get us away from that direct aspect, but I do want to tap on something that we didn't get a chance to really talk about. What are your highlights? What, what, things, what things do you remember most about, and I don't want, you know, you can give me the whole alphabetical lit, but I don't want that. I want, give me three three things that you think are the most biggest highlights of your entire 4-H entomology. And I don't know what these are going to be. So you may, no, you may no. spring, you may, oh, no, this that, is risky. No, but, and that's hard because, you know, every, well, you can generalize like some of its, you know, accomplishments, your, your first gold ribbon, you know, uh, see, I would not, I would never, something thought, like that. That's like, amazing. That's like, cool. And you don't even know that you're going to get that. Oh, I'm going to get a red or a white or whatever. Mm -hmm. I might get a blue, but then you walk in on the day that you go pick your stuff up. And there it is. It's a gold ribbon. For those folks who aren't sure what he means by that, a gold ribbon is a step above blue ribbon. Blue ribbon means you met all the standards. You met all the qualifications. You did the project as you're supposed to do. And you get a blue ribbon and everybody can get that blue ribbon not everybody does but everybody can get a blue ribbon i as a leader mentor of the club i would push people to go to that next level mm -hmm. and i would not force them i wouldn't put at least i don't think i put pressure on them but i would encourage them that's the best way to put it i would encourage them to take that little step ahead and push a little harder and get the reward of a gold ribbon. So that's mm. cool because I never would have thought of that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, that's my problem. I've been doing this for so long that that stuff is just kind of white noise. I'm so used to these <laughs> things that I don't even realize the importance of how people connect to that. So, wow, dude, super cool. That was a good one. Um, what other highlight do you think? I've noticed over the past couple of years, I think, I don't want to say y'all have gotten lazy, but going places like the Pine Barrens, you know, that has... That left such an impression on my mind. Pine Barrens, New, New Jersey. Jersey. Okay, we got to make sure to let so, people know where that is. It's just a so it's so unique, and it's one of the reasons why I love when we go out west. You only find stuff in the Pine Barrens that you can find in the Pine Barrens. I mean, they have a little bit of everything that you can find on the East Coast, but there's stuff that's endemic, weird, to the point where like you go to the right intersection, and that's the only place in the whole world that you can find that that tiger beetle. That kind of stuff is in the is in the Pine Barrens, and that's what I love about it. And just the cool factor, the adventures that you have when you go to these new and exciting places that look and feel so wildly different than northern Pennsylvania or western Maryland. Kind of like going to Arizona. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just said kind of like going to Arizona because we'll, we'll get to that and eventually we're going to get yeah. to that too. But maybe not on this, maybe not on this episode, but we're definitely going to get to those trips too. Um, cause we're running out of time here. I don't want to, I don't want to drag it. Picking, piggybacking off of that though is, you know, especially as you and I became closer, those moments where like leave most of the people back at camp cause they're yep. doing crazy or whatever. And then just go explore. Yep. And regardless of wherever you and I were in the world, we always found something that we wouldn't have found otherwise. Yep. Whether it was a hog nose snake, a, a black widow nest or. Yep. Snakes and bats and whatever kind of cool, crazy stuff that we've played yep. with over the years. Yep. Or just seeing weird shit. And, and, and that's yeah. the only time. Yeah. It's, that, like, it's like if you have too many people around, it's either not going to be seen or it's not going to exist. But as soon as those people aren't there, you're going to have a story that these people aren't going to believe. I forgot all about the hog nose snake. I forgot all about the bats. That's how bad, that's how, how much is stacked on that has kind of pushed all that stuff back. That's awesome to hear that because those are fantastic yeah. memories. Um, 
And it's not like we were out, you know, driving around doing whatever. We were oh. out there scouting, collecting locations for the next day, or where are we going to blacklight? And, well, know, outside like of outside of being beaten up by the general public for <clears throat> um, harassing the, the local bat population, comment on that. Bring that because that was a that was a unique opportunity. I'm trying to think. I'm, Remember had, where we were? That's yeah, easy. Th- that was uh, yeah, that was my cousin's farm down in Virginia, James River. Oh. Yeah. And we had a unique opportunity to observe bats up close. Well, you're being too general. You're allowed. Too general. Yeah, too that's, we're going to, you know, people, I mean, keep in mind, we were younger. We were younger. We were a we little were more, a little, a little, a little, a little more adventurous in what we were doing and a little less willing to recognize um, that we probably shouldn't have been doing this. But don't, nobody... Don't ever do this. But, but for those who, who Dude, have a research project, we, we, <laughs> I know exactly how to catch bats. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, um, so if you have a light source that attracts insects <laughs> and you put it on the ground and, and you stand oh. next to, to that long enough, bats will swoop in within a, a four to six foot range, um, which happens to be about the, the length of a, a butterfly net. <laughs> and... You get really good at your backswing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so we were in James River blacklighting one night, and uh, we realized that we were seeing the same couple bats, because we had three three stations put up, and they were about 100 yards apart. And we realized the bats were running a big circle, and they were really well t- <laughs> They were really well-timed that we could stand and almost time them to the second as to when they were going to swoop in, because we had our, our lights were set up on the ground. And, and they would swoop in and grab bugs off above, the, flying above the lights, and then they'd go to the next station. And they were just running this big, this big cycle, this big loop. And, <laughs> and we decided to maybe start catching a few bats. Um, as it turns out, those bats were red bats. I didn't even know existed. They're beautiful bats with little white collars. And, but yeah, we, we were catching bats. Um, and we were not hurting them. Everyone, we didn't hurt a single bat. That's they all got released and they all, um, you know. and we shouldn't have been doing it, but we did it. And it turned out to be one of the coolest yep. experiences, um, that, that, that I've done that isn't, you know, that doesn't involve actually playing with a, a bug or an insect, but that was definitely a unique experience. Um, and in all honesty, I've since been with my state parks here where I've been invited to get involved in some bat observations and things like that so it's weird how those things more you already had it on your resume <laughs> yeah kind of <laughs> yeah but you know it was nondescript <laughs> but but yeah so that's the kind of neat thing. what about uh what's what's something else because that's a good one dude that was so fun oh my gosh that was so fun what's what's something else that you remember that's a nice highlight that you can think of hard all right, well, for, for, no, because there's just so many. It's I almost agree. like the, you know. Agree. That's like me trying to dig up those same things. Um, if I had to dig up highlights for me um, outside of seeing success stories like you, and um, <coughs> let's let's keep in mind, I've I've had over the years, over the decades, I've had because the club was created in seventy nine, nineteen seventy nine, and we've been going pretty strong ever since. Um, and we cycle up and down just like all the organizations do. But I've had hundreds of kids come through that club over the years, and I've had kids that floated in for three months or eight years or whatever. I've had I've had some of those kids have evolved into degreed entomologists. Uh, some of those kids have gone into military. Some of those kids have you know I've got I get Andy Hogue down in North Carolina is working for Penske NASCAR as an engineer. Uh, I've had a lot of these kids that started out in the entomology club as a as a youth as an interest, um, and they've delved and they've evolved into these amazing people. Um, and I and I count you right in on that. Those are some of my proudest moments with the club is to see these kids. They don't all have to become entomologists. I've never put that pressure on them. I'm just happy they didn't get into drugs and alcohol. That they ended up with. You know, good ties. They ended up with good habits. They ended up with good good life skills, and most of them went or didn't go to college. I don't care about that. I didn't go to college, um, so it's neat to see these kids evolve into adults who now have homes, families, kids of their own, and they are highly successful people. 
that is that is my mm. that's my favorite thing. That's and and I don't think there's probably teachers out there that could say the same yeah. type of rela, rela, relatively same things. But I totally get that. Um, I totally love to see these kids grow up. And um, I've had a couple kids float around where siblings have come back in with their kids into the club. That's neat to see kind of that full circle. But I'm still waiting for some of these kids to bring their kids into the club to legitimately build a full circle uh, for the club. That will be a big highlight of mine to see see the, see that happen. But everybody's on that cusp, but not quite there yet. So, I mean, we've only, you know, we've most of these kids have only been delving in you know, for 20 or 30 years and they were pretty young back in the day. So they're, they're having kids a little bit later, I think now than they were back then, but either way, you get the point. Anything else, any other highlights? No, just the, probably just the friends that I've made along the way. Like there's like the, the Suttons, I'm still really good friends with them. Awesome. Really good relationship with them still. Same here, actually. So that's cool. The hoax, you know, just the, the various family members, uh, your, Almost like a graduating class, you guys spent, or we spent so much time together that, that everybody becomes very close and very, not dependent upon each other, but very relying on each other, at least in the context of the club. That's awesome. That's good. I want to, we're, we're, we're run out of time here, so I want to, I want to, uh, cause we're going to have to end this soon. And then what, what I want to do is I want to come back with more cause Martin has a lot to talk about whether he even knows it or not. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a lot of this is stuff that folks are going to want to hear. Um, and hopefully they're going to take some interest in, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to save that for the next episode, I think. But, um, can you think of, and this is coming at you a little broad. So if not, I'm, I'm fine. No pressure. Can you think of a, a good way to end this would be, can you think of the craziest or goofiest thing? And oh man, I'm I'm gonna regret this because you're too quiet already. Um, can you think of the craziest or goofiest uh, thing that you've ever seen me do? And it may change. I may ask you this every episode because you may think of new ones now that I got you there. But but in the moment, can you think of the craziest or goofiest thing you've ever seen me do? I don't know. Have you ever looked in the mirror? <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. No, I think you were fresh off your mullet when I first met you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to think of the goofiest thing. There was. A <laughs> I was an '80s kid, man. What do you want? I had a mullet and a mustache, uh, and I looked like Joe Dirt. That's just how Joe it works. Um, what like, was the the Holdman Mansion? Uh, <laughs> now this wasn't even your fault. You took a sip of something of your tea. Well, that's yeah. We were there you, running you, black lights, but you got stung by a yellow jacket. Oh no 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 no! That was that was the uh, that wasn't Haldeman. It was the next day because we blacklit the night before. Yep yep. And we were already that was a so tired. Oh god, dude! How do you? Wow! And he took a sip of his tea in oh. an open cup. Took a sip of his tea, got stung. He's like, well, this is sucks. And then progressively throughout the day, his lip just got My more whole mouth. and more swollen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a soda can. Started talking like Donald Duck. It, <laughs> we were. Oh, wow, dude, you pulled that one out. Yeah, that's where we were doing a community day, and I believe that was either sponsored or promoted by the Ned Smith yes. Center, and it was held down on that on and the on that side of the river um in one of those community parks and we were invited to partake and that was one of the first bug man yeah. events community events that we officially did what was that 15 2015 yep. 2016 yeah. 2015 yeah yeah hadn't even having hadn't even launched the company no that was officially like one of our first bug man events outside of great insect fair the entire place got mobbed by wasps and everybody was struggling to keep because they'd be in your face, and and we were all struggling with it. But I set my soda can down, and I ha had some people holding some bugs and and some tarantulas, <laughs> and I didn't know it, but my soda can filled up with wasps, like three or four of them, and without even thinking about it, I took a big swig, and I I got all three of those wasps in my mouth, and I got stung uh, multiple times before I could spit them out, you know, pinch them, crush them, or get, just stop the immediate attack and literally the whole lower end of my face swelled 
um, to where I couldn't breathe out of my nose. And I'm not even allergic to that stuff. I do beehive removals now, and I, I get stung all the time, and it doesn't bother me. But three in the mouth all at the same time, that was a bad day. Yeah. Um, I had to go double Benadryl up. I can remember. I remember walking back to the. How did you remember that? I remember walking back to the car, <laughs> to go the truck to go get to double Benadryl up because I knew this was going to be ugly. Um, and I think the really. I shouldn't go here. The really worst part of that was is Julie, who was the president of the Entomological Society, whom I'm still friends with on Facebook who is a beautiful lady, and I had hardly known her at all, but was trying real hard to get to know her. That was my first <laughs> face-to-face, talking to her, meeting her experience, and it was about 20 minutes after my face had swollen, and I was talking like this, and she was even weirded out by the whole thing because she could tell something wasn't right about me. But she couldn't figure out what it was. And I literally had to explain to her, well, I got numb by, I got numb by lots. And that, it's almost like you had a root canal and your whole mouth is numb. Um, it was it was a bad, bad moment. Um, but, you know, Julie, Julie is having a wonderful life. She's down in Florida now and she's got a husband and a, and a kid and everything. And it's, she's got a really cool gig going on. Kudos to her. And um, But, yeah, that was a, wow, dude, what a freaky <laughs> thing to remember. I had totally forgotten about that. So that is... That's that was goofy. At least it wasn't something I did on purpose, no. or you know, not like I, you know, tripped over and you know, punched a kid or something. That, that would be a bad thing. Um, but that would that would definitely be bad. But um, that's cool. That's that was a that was a good memory in the past and a horrible memory in the moment. Um, <laughs> not something I was looking forward to. So kudos to you for that. That's why I like hanging out with you, buddy, because you bring up things like that that are so far in the back now that I don't even remember those things existed. Oh, I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Very glad often. you do. Um, when you said Haldeman, I thought you were going to talk about when we did the blacklighting at Haldeman and and I, you guys were all wigged out walking around it that mansion. Very spooky. Um, yeah, I would yeah, not go in that. It's you wouldn't, you wouldn't. And and Isaac and I were trying desperately to freak you out even more by by making bumps in the dark and doing weird things, but um, you were already freaked out and standing outside. You wouldn't come in. So I don't blame you. It's, it's a, it's a creepy place, but it's a still a lot of history and a neat place. And I still go there every year. Um, so kudos. I, I love that. That's, that's, that is good stuff on every level. So what I want to do guys, I want to, I want to end this here for the moment. Um, I want to, uh, find a nice comfortable place that we can, we can stop this and bring you guys in. Uh, I think on our next one, buddy, I think what we want to do, what I want to do anyway, is I want to, uh, I want to get you into a lot more past experience, obviously, because that's where the fun really <laughs> yeah. is. But I also want to I want to talk about travel. I want to talk about some of the trips you and I have been on, both together and alone. Um, and, you know, and I definitely, um, I definitely want to delve. I got my cheat sheet here. I definitely want to delve into more of the present. I want to bring everybody up to speed as to where the Bug Man, as a company is um what is happening uh because there's stuff in the works that people never know about uh this company always evolves you guys are always dragged in kicking and screaming um and i'm glad for that and at the same time uh there's just a lot going on every moment in this in this company much the same as our relationship has has evolved into what it is now the company's doing the same but so so happy to have people like you there with me so so happy to have qualified people that i can fall back on and delegate and get advice and and whatever help i need and in the moment um i call on you guys and i've been doing this to you for years but i call on you and and you're there um no hesitation typically no problem and really big patience um i require that because what i do what i do you know to you guys technology wise is is tough um and i struggle so I'm I'm really pleased and, and very blessed to have you, uh, especially you, uh, here with me all that time. Either way, guys, I want to I want to end this here on a on a high on a high note, of course, and I want to welcome you guys to slide back into the next one because this isn't a podcast, man. I can't do three hours standing on my head for you. So I want to I want to end this now. Martin and I will come back with you um, on another episode soon, and we're going to complete this. Uh, hopefully, this won't drag out too far, but. 
I want to make sure we get as much into this as we can and entertain and, and interject as, as much in as we can. So anyway, guys, uh, there you go. We lost one of the cameras, so I got to end this now where we're at. So thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, we'll bring Martin back for another one here soon, and uh, we'll continue where we're going on with this. All right, guys. Hey, it's right. <coughs> Hey man, be sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you like what's going on here and you enjoy it, then help me out, all right? Thanks, I appreciate your support. Take care, guys.